A new program at Roan State aims not only to train workers, but also to help companies, including small businesses, learn how they can utilize breakthroughs in the composites industry to grow and create jobs. The diversity of jobs that are going to be available, they may not all be available today, but there are many, many jobs already in this region, and it's, it's, very, it, it's just so exciting to see what the potential is here right now. Composite materials, such as carbon fiber, are used to create lightweight, durable, and energy efficient products. Oak Ridge National Laboratory is leading research in how to affordably make carbon fiber so that it can be used widely in manufacturing. As part of the ACE program, Roan State will develop a two-year associate's degree program to prepare students to work in the composites industry. Mike Farmer says he hopes to launch composite materials courses as directed electives in Roan State's general technology degree program in the coming semesters. He envisions carbon fiber manufacturing becoming a hot field for graduates. We're really on the edge of seeing the reindustrial revolution with this, with carbon fiber, lighter than steel, stronger than steel. If we can get costs down, I mean it's very expensive, but if we can get costs to a competitive range and we can reduce the weight of the vehicles that are out on the road right now, maintain their structural integrity, you know it's amazing what we're going to be able to do, in reduction in fuel use, uh, increase in fuel economy, uh, we just have a, we're on the cutting edge of a great opportunity. The Complete College Tennessee Act of 2010 was signed into law by the governor to stimulate growth and productivity at the state's higher education centers, including Roan State, resulting in more graduates who are better qualified for four-year university transfers or entry into the workplace. It's a shift that Roan State leaders are taking seriously. We have always thought as educators about student success, and that's been what our passion has been about. But sometimes we don't focus as much on how that translate, how that student success translate into the actual completion of uh, a degree, a certificate, transfer, or other type of credential that they may be earning. We've rolled up our sleeves at Roan State and we're working on a number of initiatives to help students complete the academic plan that they've set for themselves and to reduce the amount of time that it takes them to do that. Among the things that we've learned is that students need to be much more targeted in the courses that they take. Um, it, there's a tendency if students don't know what they want to major in or what they want to do that they kind of wander around the curriculum and end up taking many more courses than they might actually need. Um, and while they're doing that, they're either spending their resources or their parents' resources or financial aid. And now that there are more limits to the aid that students can receive, we want to make sure that students really target their goals very early. Every major has an academic plan, which maps out a curriculum that students follow. This helps students know what courses to take in order to graduate on time. Students can still explore new areas and interesting courses, but will also move toward their destinations as efficiently as possible. Also, a new early alert system can notify instructors and administrators if students find themselves in academic peril. There's some talk about creating a Roan State app, mobile app, and we've been asking students through a number of survey mechanisms what they would like this app to do. Um, and it's very interesting. They, they want to know things about when classes are open, um, when their grades are posted. There are many, many students are very excited about the communication possibilities of a Roan State mobile app. What remains the same is Roan State's commitment to academic integrity. As a faculty member, if you mention the word completion, just a natural reaction is going to be, well, are you asking me to water down the curriculum so that more folks can get through the turnstiles at the end? And the answer to that is an emphatic no. We will not lower standards. But realizing that we do, we must have more completers. What can we do, maintaining academic integrity on one hand, what can we do as far as putting processes and things in place to get folks to meet that standard and still yet get to the other side of the completion of a degree or certificate or transfer. Restrictions to financial aid, including lifetime maximums, are also pushing students toward graduation. School leaders say that college completion is part of making each student's time at Roan State as effective, efficient, and rewarding as possible. My name is Hampson Miller. I am the Director of Alumni Relations here at Roan State Community College. Uh, a new office as of about eight, nine years ago uh, when the college decided they needed an alumni office. Uh, they asked me to, to 
would I be interested in setting it up? And so I accepted the new challenge and moved into it. Two of the biggest activities that I did when I was with Continuing Education was the Academic Festival and the Boy Scout Merit Badge College, both which are still huge events and both still being actively supported by the college. Uh, I'm really proud of both of those events. Uh, the Academic Festival was not my invention. It was something that uh, was actually the brainchild of one of our former English faculty who wanted a way for our local high schools to participate in college activities, some kind of competition. So in 1977, they created the Humanities Festival where they invited area high schools and they had about 200 students come from our local uh, county high schools, five high schools, and they competed in a variety of humanities activities, art, writing, music, that sort of thing. And then in 1991, Dr. Hoppe came and decided that it was time to add the other academic portion to the festival and became the academic festival. And we added uh, math and science and foreign language and all sorts of really interesting things. And now it's huge. Uh, what started out as a 200 uh, student festival is well over 2,100 students every year. Uh, this past year we had 44 high schools and homeschool programs participating. Uh, just a wonderful event. I am originally from Knoxville. I went to Powell High School in Knox, uh, Knoxville. My mother was a teacher at Powell High School. She taught art. Uh, my father is actually grew up in, Knox, uh, in Knoxville. Um, although my mother is originally from Oklahoma. Uh, she met my dad during World War II at a naval base. And so we ended up here. I think everybody needs to go to college uh, if that's what you want to do. Uh, or go to a trade school if that's where your interest lies. I was very fortunate to go to a wonderful university. Um, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Brigham Young University in Interior Design. Um, loved it while I was there, did a lot of amazing things there, not just, the, not just in my field, but a lot of wonderful extracurricular activities that I did on the site too. Um, and then after I left Brigham Young, I, I began working. And then somewhere around 1985, I worked on my master's. And I um, have a master's in adult, in adult education. So it just sort of has been seamless for me, going from one thing to the next. One of the things that I loved about Brigham Young University was the fact that they allowed students to develop whatever their interests were, whether it was art or singing or uh, playing any instrument or sport. They have a, just an absolutely phenomenal intramural program for whatever you might be interested in. And the first semester I was there, I saw their uh, ballroom dance team perform, and I was just absolutely stunned. I was just amazed at the beauty of what these students were doing. And it was a fairly aggressive competition to, to try out for. There were like 500 girls trying out for like 40 slots. And so I tried out for it that first semester I was there and I made the team. <laughs> and I was so tickled because I just loved it. And I stayed with it the entire time that I was there and I worked my way up to what they called the gold standard team. Uh, we did international ballroom dancing. I was on a uh, formation team. I didn't do the solo dancing like you see on Dancing with the Stars. I could have and I actually did. Uh, did a, a few competitions like that, but my primary emphasis was on the, the uh, formation teams, a couple formation teams. I am originally from Knoxville. I went to Powell High School in Knox, uh, Knoxville. My mother was a teacher at Powell High School. She taught art. Uh, my father is actually grew up in, Knox, uh, in Knoxville, um, although my mother is originally from Oklahoma. Uh, she met my dad during World War II at a naval base. and so. We ended up here. We're a small county. We don't have a lot of the resources as the larger counties, but we have some amazing, talented people here. And here at the college, we have uh, a theater program, we have a music program, and we have just amazing concerts available all year long. I'm really sad to see when we have these beautiful productions, so very few people sitting in the audience. And it's like it's the best kept secret that we have, that we have these wonderful things going on campus here. And I don't know what else we can do to promote these things. I really hope the schools and, the, and parents will get their students over here and let them see what we have to offer.